Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking to you about romance books that have chronic illness representation in them. So if you don't know me and you are new to my channel, I actually have a chronic illness myself called POTS. Um, and so if you want to know more about my chronic illness, because I'm not going to be touching really on that all that much in this video, um, I have my diagnosis story linked down below, as well as my other YouTube channel where I talk about my chronic illness and um, my other disorder called celiac disease. So if you want to check those things out, those are down below for you to look at. Um, but anyways, let's dive right on into these books. Well, first off, if you don't know what a chronic illness is, it's basically like an illness that can never be cured really. Um, like for example, a sickness like the flu, you can cure the flu, like stuff like that. Like these are chronic illnesses that people have to live the rest of their lives with and that affect their daily life. First we have Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I adore Talia Hibbert. She's one of my favorite authors of all time because of how diverse she makes her stories as well as how amazing her writing is because I fully believe every single story that she writes and I think that these characters are real people, honestly. So Chloe is a woman who has lived a very sheltered life due to her chronic illness. She has a chronic illness called a fibromyalgia and at the beginning of this book, she almost gets hit by a car and she realizes she hasn't really done a lot with her life so she's gonna make a get a life list where she has kind of like a bucket list of things she wants to do in order to get a life. Um, like a few things on there is like move out of my parents' house, ride on a motorcycle, go out clubbing with friends, like stuff like that. And so she gets a new place finally and then she meets Redford who is kind of like the handyman superintendent of the building and they do not really get off on the right foot. Chloe kind of like is kind of like friends with everybody except for Red. Red for some reason ticks her off so bad. Red is kind of ticked off by Chloe too and so it's kind of like a not enemies to lovers, it's kind of like dislike or banter to love. Anyway, uh, Red figures out that Chloe has this get a life list and he's gonna help her complete it in exchange for uh, her helping him build his art website. He's an artist and he needs his website done. Um, and she is a graphic designer and a website builder. So And so Red helps her complete this get a life list and they end up falling for each other throughout all of this. The chronic illness representation here is honestly perfect. I don't have fibromyalgia. My chronic illness is very similar to it. So I've connected with Chloe just so much and what she has to do to cope with things and what she does when she has a flare up and how she feels telling people about her illness. I really connect to Chloe. And if you want a fantastic book that I feel like anybody who has a chronic illness can relate to, this is one to pick up. Next is another Talia Hibbert book. We have That Kind of Guy. This is the third book in the Ravenswood series. You can read this out of order if you want. I honestly would recommend that you read them in order just because you would get the best reading experience out of it because you would know sad characters and these two characters who are the center of this story pop up at the beginning of the series and so you get to read about them even more before their story um but you do you. I'm not the reading police to read whatever book you want. This book is about Zach and Ray. Zach and Ray have been friends for a little bit. They're in the same friend group that is in this series, who you've read about in previous books in the series, and they become very close friends for it, even though Ray is significantly older than Zach. Ray is newly divorced. Her husband cheated on her, and he is now expecting a baby with that woman, and she has to go to this writer's convention with him because her and her ex-husband are both professional, like are authors, like they're authors. She really wants a date to kind of like show him that she's moved on from him because she has, but she doesn't have a boyfriend or a date. And so Zach is like volunteering to be her date for her and to pretend to be her boyfriend during this writing convention. And through them spending more time together and having to share a hotel room and all this stuff, they start to possibly fall in love with one another. Ray has always felt feelings for Zach, however, Zach is slowly starting to understand his sexuality. He may be discovering that he is dem demisexual. I can never say that word right the first time. Demisexual. And so he's starting to realize that he needs to form a friendship bond with somebody before um, fully falling in love with them. And throughout the book, he realizes that he does have that with Ray. Ray is the heroine on this list that has my chronic illness. And I think it's done really well. I do wish that there was more incorporated or talked about my chronic illness in the story, but that's just my personal preference. I would love there to be more talk about it, but the content about POTS in here is great. It's fantastic. Tolly Hubbard actually has POTS as well. And so it's own voices. And I think she does it really well. Ray actually has a scar on her face. Um, because of one of her episodes. It's kind of hard to read about it, but it was really good to see something similar to what I go through. <laughs> so yeah, I really recommend this book. And if you want to know more about POTS um, in general and to read about a character who you've never read about before, I really recommend picking this one up. Next, I have Man in Charge by Laurel and Page. Now this book, neither one of the main characters has a chronic illness. It's actually the heroine's best friend that has my chronic illness 
as well. So I think it's amazing that two books on this list has my chronic illness that you don't really read about, about a lot. Like no one really knows about POTS. Um, like I didn't know it was a thing until I got diagnosed with it. So um, I think it's fantastic that it's in at least two books that I love. So this is a forbidden romance between a woman and a guy at this big head up company. It's an office romance. They have times happening in the office. <laughs> in the boardroom and um this really reminded me of um beautiful bastard by christina lauren with the dynamic and everything um i just thought that was really fun even though she's not his assistant she's like an outside party working for his company but the chronic illness representation in here is the heroine's best friend this book was so good with its representation it wasn't just having a best friend that had pots our heroine works for a charity company centered around people with disabilities and those who have disabilities that are not able to work and her best friend who has pots is one of those people and so she really advocates for her best friend and it is awesome like it is awesome um we do have a flare up on page here you see the heroine's best friend i forget her name i think it's um tiana if i'm not mistaken i may be totally wrong but we see her faint in public and i'm like that is 100 percent relatable and i have gone through something like that i was just reading that scene and i thought it was so relatable i think any single discussion about chronic illnesses and pots in this story was amazing and i do kind of wish that sometimes we maybe got into the head of the friend who had pots um because that's what i really wanted and i even messaged laurel and page after reading this book and i was like are we ever gonna get her story like i want to read about her as a heroine i want her to be the main character of the story and she's like never say never i'm hoping that this character gets their own book because that would be so good i of course have two books by chloe lease from the bergman brothers series um this series is about a bunch of people in a family because they're not necessarily all brothers because the third book in this series is about freya who is the bergman sister but it's called the bergman brothers series probably because of alliteration <laughs> but the second book is about ren and frankie and this is one of my favorite books from 2021 i adore it ren is one of my favorite if not my favorite hero of all time in a romance book ren is a hockey player and Frankie is kind of like the social media manager for the hockey team. Frankie has autism and she has um, RA, rheumatoid arthritis. And so she does walk around with a cane and chronic illnesses in here are talked about <laughs> so well. And Frankie just fully embraces who she is and won't take crap from nobody and won't face judgment from nobody. And she just personally loves herself and her cane and she calls it the elder wand and <laughs> she casts spells on people with it. It is so cute. And Red in here was one of the best things about this book in here because of how he fully embraces and loves Frankie and accepts her and doesn't think that her chronic illness diminishes her in any way and that she is all the better for it and he does everything for her and just swoons over her and has been pining over her for years anyway I forgot to also say okay so these two get together because uh, Ren has been lusting over Frankie for years, but Ren knows that Frankie isn't really ready for a relationship because she has told him that. Frankie's apartment gets broke, or house gets broken into, and Ren is like, hey, I have an, a spare bedroom in my house. Come stay with me until your locks and windows get fixed and all that stuff. And so they're in forced proximity living together in his house, and they're forced to reveal their feelings for an, one another. And Frankie and Ren are one of my favorite couples of all time. Ren is possibly my favorite hero ever because he is just amazing. I love how caring and understanding and swoon worthy he is. And then the other book in the series is With You Forever. This one is about Rooney and Axel and you've read about them in the previous books in the series and they've kind of been like dancing around each other for a little bit. So Axel has been trying to renovate his family's uh, cabin. Rooney's a family friend and so she goes, she's been asked if she could go to the cabin to have kind of like a little bit of a veg session after law school, you know. Um, and so she goes there but uh, Axel is there and he's like, this cabin is collapsing, you can't stay here. And so he takes her to his cabin, which is a short distance away and they have to live together in this cabin. And then by some means they have to get in a marriage of convenience with one another. I'm not gonna go into details with it, but they do. And it is so good. Like the progression in here of like friends pining to lovers is so beautiful. I of course also love a marriage of convenience story. Um, Axel in here has, I believe just been diagnosed with autism. So he's kind of, talking through that and kind of like trying to understand it more. And then Rooney in here is the one that has a chronic illness. She has ulcerative colitis and it's kind of very similar to IBS, I wanna say, I'm pretty sure. I really connected to her with <laughs> her ulcerative colitis because 
I have celiac disease. If you have any autoimmune disorder, especially if it's a tummy issue related <laughs> autoimmune disorder, you cannot wait to go to the bathroom. And uh, Rooney in here is just so relatable in that. There's like literally one scene where she literally has to stop on the side of the road on like a highway with no one around her. It's like grassy area. And she has to pop a squat <laughs> on the side of the road because she cannot help it and then she ends up finding a kitten on the side of the road while she's doing this and taking it home and axel's like where did you find this kitten like where'd you find it and she won't tell him that she found it because she couldn't she was going to the restroom on the side of the road oh my gosh anyway everything that rooney goes through in here is very similar to my uh celiac disease not just my uh pots yes she even eats gluten-free in here which was amazing to read about i've never ever 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 read about a character who eats gluten-free like for the sole necessity of it not because it's like a fad or a trend or you know um so i really loved that in here and then the last book that i want to talk about that i've already read is called sick kids in love by hannah moskowitz this is actually a ya book but i feel like the representation in here and the discussion about chronic illnesses is amazing i don't remember the characters names in here i read this book before i started writing reviews on goodreads and so i don't have a, like a full length review on my goodreads or anything but this is definitely a five star read from me the heroine ends up meeting the hero one day at the hospital because they're both getting treatments for their chronic illness and um they end up becoming very close friends and then they fall in love with one another um but they're trying to navigate being in a relationship while also having a chronic illness and the discussion of chronic illnesses in here is just so good and you can tell that somebody who has a chronic illness has written this book so if you want to know more about chronic illnesses and how to specifically talk to somebody or interact or be friends or be in love or have a relationship with somebody who has a chronic illness and you don't have one and you want to learn how to interact with people like that this book is definitely one to read it kind of like inadvertently teaches you the do's and don'ts of what to do um without like being like very blatant about it um because i really connected to the heroine's relationship with her dad not just like because my dad is like this. I mean like in general with people because people don't necessarily understand chronic illnesses and her dad, who's even a doctor, don't get me started on doctors <laughs> and chronic illnesses, but he's a doctor and he still doesn't fully kind of like accept what she has, you know? It's really hard. And so I really connected with her relationship with her dad, with me and like the general, general people who don't understand what it's like to live with a chronic illness and won't take the time to understand. I think this is just done really well. And if you wanna know more about chronic illnesses, please pick this one up. Okay, so there are a few, there are six that are on my TBR. I'm just gonna go over them really quickly. At first, we obviously have Real by Kennedy Ryan. I'm not gonna really know the summaries for all these books um, because I don't wanna know too much. I like to go into books as blind as possible, but I do know that this is kind of like a Hollywood-esque story. Our hero ends up I believe casting our heroine in his new movie he's making and they end up falling in love and she is the one that has a chronic illness i don't know which chronic illness it is necessarily yet but i do know that a lot of my friends absolutely adore this book and love it almost every person that i've talked to has given this book five stars then i have one for all by lily lanoff this is a book that's coming out this year it's coming out march 8th of 2022 i am so incredibly excited for this because a heroine has my chronic illness <laughs> this is a three musketeers retelling about a heroine becoming a warrior woman like she has to learn how she wants to be a musketeer so badly because that's what her dad was and um but she has to navigate being a musketeer and being active like that while also having a chronic illness like mine which you can't stand up for long periods of time and something can make you very dizzy very easily and make you faint really easily and so i am super duper duper excited for this please put this on your 2022 tpr next i have intention by ada harrison um i know that this book has a heroine who has endometriosis and so that's why i want to read it i have some lovely wonderful sweet friends who also have endometriosis um they haven't read this book yet but um, I hope the representation is done really well. So maybe they can find something they can really connect to. Next, I have Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Uh, some of my lovely friends from the Sick Chicks uh, group chat that we have told me that this book has really great chronic illness representation in it. I don't necessarily know what it's about, but I do know that it has been on some of their all-time favorites of 2021 videos. So I am going to be looking forward to this one. I'm going to go find the audiobook on Libby and try to listen to it soon. Um, next is The Casanova by T.L. Swan. I'm pretty sure. One of my friends, I think Crystal told me that this book, the heroine has endometriosis, but it's not really touched on all that much. So we'll see. I feel like even just a little bit of representation 
hopefully is good. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, Brie from 11 Words recommended this book to me. It's Love Flushed by Evie Mitchell. I forget what chronic illness she has. I think it's similar to IBS if I'm not mistaken. Um, or like ulcerative colitis like I talked about earlier with With You Forever. I think that's what's going on here. But this is on my TBR to read very, very soon. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this. So there you have it. Those are some recommendations for chronic illness representation in books, as well as some that are on my TBR that you could put on your TBR as well. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you have made it this far, leave me a pink heart emoji, any kind of pink heart emoji. But yeah, I hope you're able to pick these books up and hopefully understand chronic illnesses more or maybe feel even seen if you have one. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.